All right, so we're on to uh, solving logarithmic equations. Now, a couple of notes about the log function that I haven't really gone through yet is that if we have some function y equals or f of x equals, same thing, the log of base a uh, log of x. The key here is, is that your base of a always has to be greater than zero and the value inside your log function always has to be greater than zero. So that's just two key notes that can come up when you are solving log functions. Now, I'm going to skip to example two here because I'm going to come back up to example one. Because in example two, we have, again, solve for x, and we're going to have that, where we have log of x minus 5 is equal to log of 10. Now, when you have a situation where you just have two logs on each side of the equal sign, what you can do is simply what's called d log is that both of these equations, or both sides of the equation, are on a the same level, and so that we can just d-log, where this simply becomes x minus 5 is equal to 10. And then, of course, I could just solve that equation by moving the minus 5 over to the other side, in which case the 5 would become positive, add to the 10, and we would just simply get x equals 15. Now, why I did example two ahead of example number one is because we just don't simply have a log equaling a log in this case because of this two. But again, I can use my log rules that we've had, or three log rules that we've looked at, and there is many more, uh, where now I can rewrite this as log base two. Now, again, these to use to d log, easy for me to say, you do have to have the same base, which we do and we will. All right, so this can become now log of base two, but I have five to the power of two. And now I'm in a situation where I actually do have a log on each side. And so I can d log, for lack of a better term. And so now I have x equals 5 to the power of 2. And, well, I of course, I can find 5 to the power of 2. And so x is going to equal 5 squared, which is 25. All right. So that's one form of solving logarithmic equations. We're going to go through quite a few other forms. Now, this is another type that we looked at. We have solve for x. We have the log base x of 0 0.04 equals negative 2. Now, in this case, we do not have uh, a, a log equaling a log, two logs on each side. But, so in this case, what we can do is uh, switch from log arithmetic form to exponential form. All right, and so that again is the case where we're looking at is this number here, x is our base. Negative two is our exponent. And our answer is equal to 0 0.04. Now this is another good skill that for many of you who are going to take calculus, that we're going to look at is dealing with exponents. And I've dealt and I've talked about that earlier today. When you have a root symbol, we write as a fraction x to the power of one half. All right. That's an example of how we're going to manipulate exponents because we're going to need to with calculus. Another way of doing this when you have a negative exponent is that really means that we can flip the reciprocal, take the reciprocal of the base and make the exponent positive. So x to the power of negative 2 is going to be 1 over x squared. All right, and I'm doing that so that I can more easily solve this equation, in which case now I can create a fraction equaling a fraction because I want to cross multiply. And so uh, I end up with, well, x squared times 0 0.04. So that's going to be 0 0.04 times x squared is equal to, uh, well, 1 times 1. All right, now if I try to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by that 0 0.04. 
what I do to one side, I got to do to the other. And so now those 0.04s divide each other out. I get just an x squared. And if I take 1 and I divide it by 0.04, I actually get just 25. All right. And the last step here is I take the square root of both sides. Now, here's a little bit of a trick is that x, when you take the square root of a number, you get two answers. x equals 5 and x equals minus 5. But, 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 remember, our base cannot be negative. So in this case, the x value represents the base. And so this is not possible. So the answer is x equals 5. And again, that's because we did get two answers, but unfortunately, one of them is inadmissible or not possible, however you want to look at it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh, can't go down anymore. Okay. Uh, example four, solve for x. We have three log x plus log three equals two log nine. Okay. So there's a lot, whole lot wrong with this. We do have two log functions on both sides, but again, we don't have a log equaling a simple log. But what I can do is, again, use my log rules to combine these two. Now, the first thing I'm going to do on the left side here is I'm going to move that exponent up onto the x cubed, or to make it x cubed. So I can just cross that out right away. But then I'm going to use the other log rule in which these two logs are adding, and so I can write them as a single log but multiplying. So I'm going to have three times that X cubed equals, well, I'm going to bring on the right-hand side of my equation, I'm going to bring that two and put it on the top. Use that log rule. So it's going to be nine squared. And you know what? I could just write that as a, a number here as nine squared, which is nine times nine, 81. And now, because I just used my log rules, I have a log equaling a log. And so I can delog, if you will. And so I have 3x cubed is equal to 81. All right, uh, I'm going to get x by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3 here, first off. And so uh, I'm just going to have an x cubed on this side. 81 divided by 3 is uh, 27. And now, again, this is something uh, I know I've done in grade 11 math. I'm not sure, again, how many of you have done this before. I know many of you said you didn't, uh, who were, weren't in my class. But if I want to get solve for x, I want to get rid of the cubed. I have to take the cubed root of both sides. All right, and so then I simplify down to x, and I'm finding the third root of 27, which again means what number times itself will give you 20, what, sorry, what number times itself three times will give you 27, and the answer is three. Three times three times three will give you 27, and so the answer is three, and does it work? Got to double check in our original equation here. Yeah, it works. Put a three there, it's greater than zero, so we're good. That works. All right, uh, ooh, example five, a little bit of a combination. So now I have a log function on one side of the equation, but a number on the other. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is combine the logs uh, that I have on the left-hand side of my equation. All right, so because they're addition again, I'm going to write it as log. Easy for me to write. It was called big, bigger letters, maybe easier. So I have the log. I'm going to put the base 7 in there. And because they're uh, adding, I can now rewrite it as a single log of multiplying. Oops. X minus 5. All right. And that is equal to 1. And again, I have a base of 7. Can't forget that. All right, so now I have this case of 
the other case of a single log equaling a number. So this is now, again, where I'm going to switch from logarithmic form to exponential form. And so uh, in doing that, again, here's my base. Seven's my base. Here's my exponent to the power of one, which is just a seven. And here's my answer where I have this polynomial of uh, x plus 1 uh, times x minus 5. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do here is uh, to solve this. First of all, 7 to the power of 1 is just 7, so we can just get rid of that. But uh, I'm going to have to do FOIL here. So I got 7 here is equal to, let's see, first, x times x, x squared. Uh-oh, going to have a quadratic equation here. Uh, x times minus 5 minus 5x. Inside ones, 1 times x is positive 1x. And then last ones, 1 times minus 5 is minus 5. All right, so uh, again, this is a quadratic equation. So I'm going to simplify, but at the same time, I'm going to bring this 7 over to the other side because, again, solving any polynomial function, you got to have a 0 on one side. And so I've got x squared uh, minus 5x plus an x minus 4x. All right, then minus 5. This 7 is coming over, so it's also going to be a minus 7. So in total, I'm going to have minus 12. Okay, so uh, time to solve. I'm going to go with factoring. I'm going to try it out. So uh, x squared in the top left. The last term, minus 12 in the top right. x squared, always going to be x and x. Uh -huh. Two numbers, the minus 12. Okay, crisscross to give me minus 4x. Uh, minus 6 and 2, I'm guessing, I'm hoping. Let's see here. So cross multiplying, minus 6x plus 2x. Yeah, that gives me the minus 4x. All right, so this quadratic factored is going to be 0 equals the one factor is x minus 6, and the other one is x plus 2. All right, so uh, this time I've got two pieces to factor, and I'm looking for what makes these equal to 0. First part, x equals 6. Uh, the second part, x equals negative 2. So there's my two answers, but I got to check them out first. All right, so I'm going to go back up. Let's see here. I got 6 and negative 2 are my answers. Uh, 6 works in here because I would have a 7 in here. That's positive. 6 works in the second log because, again, it would be positive. In brackets, has to be positive. What was the other value? X equals negative 2. Negative 2 doesn't work in either one because that would make the part in brackets negative. So not possible in this case because, again, it makes part of that log function negative, which can't be. So our one answer here is X equals 6. That's it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Ah, this one's key. All right. So this is like an advanced math. This is an experience types question here. Solve for X. We have four to the power of two to the two X plus 25 equals 10 to the power of four X. All right. Now here's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to show you why this is an experience question. And this is why you're getting your experience. I'm going to move this uh, 10 to the 10 times 4 to the power of x over. And so this equation is now going to be written as 4 to the power of 2 to the power of x. All right, minus, I'm going to put them in order here. I'll show you why. 10 to the power of 4x uh, plus 25 equals 0. All right. Now, again, this is just an experience type question. But then I'm going to do this. I'm going to let 4 to the power of x uh, equal y. 
All right, here's why I'm doing that. Because now this term here, if I substitute in a y for 4 to the power of x, I could also write 4 to the power of x is equal, whoops, here, that first term, 4 to the power of x squared is equal to 4 to the power of 2x. All right, so that's a little substitute. So if I substitute in for y here, I'm going to end up with y squared. Right, because 4 to the power of, if I put a y in here, because I'm substituting y in for 4 to the power of x, it would be y squared right here. I would square it. All right, so that's a little bit of a different one. Minus 10, 4 to the power of x is y again. And, well, 25 is 25. Equals 0. So secretly, this equation is a quadratic equation with an exponential equation embedded in it. Yeah, kind of nasty. Again, an experience type question. All right, so now this is a quadratic equation, like just like I did before, that I'm going to factor. So I've got a y squared in the top left, uh, a 25 in the top right. Now, if I'm doing y squared, just like x squared, it's y and y. Uh, I have to do my crisscross uh, to get negative 10y. Two numbers that multiply to give me 25. Uh, 5 and 5. I do my cross multiplying. I get 5y plus 5y. That's 10y. I needed negative 10y. So let's change the signs here. Negative 5 times negative 5 does give me 25. But again, now cross multiplying, I get negative 5y minus another 5y. That's my minus 10y. So now how, because I factored this equation, it looks like this. Uh, y minus 5 times y minus 5 equals 0. Well, what's the answer? I've got to figure out when each piece is equal to 0. Well, they're both equal to 0 when y equals 5. But we are trying to solve for x. And we made this substitution here. Or I, I'll say I made this substitution. Who's kidding who here, right? All right, so that means that uh, 4 to the power of x is equal to 5. Now, we looked at solving this type of exponential equation uh, by taking the log because we're solving for an exponent of taking the log of both sides. I'm taking log to the power four, or sorry, log of four to the power of x equals uh, the log of five. And again, that log rule allows me to bring the x down in front. So there's what we end up with. And if I want to solve for x, essentially what I can do now is that x is equal to whatever, take the log of 5, which I could have figured out. It's just a number, divided by the log of 4. Because again, missed a step there. I divide both sides by log 4. And uh, let's see, I do that in my calculator here, the log of 5, the log of 5, which is going to be a small number, so is the log of 4. Log of 5 is uh, 0.699 uh, divided by the log of 4, which is 0.6, and I end up with, the answer is 1.16. And in this case, we're not dealing with logarithmic, so that's our answer x equals 1.6. All right, so again, that's an experience type question where, again, you have a quadratic equation with an exponential equation embedded in it. You can get that kind of stuff as we move into higher level math. All right, whoa, example seven. Again, this is all true. I've got this information true. Uh, so the Richter scale is, there's a lot of ways, I guess, to uh, do a Richter scale. We did with energy before, but uh, the Richter scale is used to compare the intensities of earthquakes. Uh, the Richter scale, which has a magnitude of R of an earthquake, is determined using that formula right there, uh, where A is the amplitude of the vertical ground motion in micrometers, so how much the ground's being shifted. 
T is the length of time of the seismic wave laps or lasts, and B is a factor that accounts for the weakening of the seismic waves. All right, so find the amplitude uh, of the vertical ground motion. If an earthquake creates a wave that lasts 1.5 seconds, has a weakening factor of 2.5, and measures 7.5 on the Richter scale. Okay, so let's figure out what we got here. All right, so uh, let's see here. Uh, the wave lasts 1.5 seconds. That is our T value. All right, so T, just getting down the information I know here, is equal to 1.5 seconds. All right, uh, the weakening factor, that is, let me see, and B is a factor that accounts for the weakening of the side end. So that's our B factor there. B is equal to 2.5. All right, it measures 7.5 on the Richter scale. Okay. Uh, what else do we got here? Find the amplitude of the vertical ground motion in micrometers yeah micrometers so we're looking for the a value which is inside our function all right so i have my function here r equals log of a divided by t plus b so i'm going to substitute in that information all right so our r value is whoops our richter scale value is 7.5 equal to the log of a which i don't know we're going to figure out how much this ground has shifted the time is 1.5 and our weakening factor here is 2.5 all right so uh i'm going to get a by itself here so the first thing i can do is sh move that 2.5 over to the other side all right and if it moves over to the other side it becomes negative so 7.5 minus 2.5 I get five and that's going to equal the log of a that's an a by the way over 1.5 all right so this is the case of what we had earlier where i have a log a simple log not a simple log but a log equaling a number and so this is where i'm going to switch to exponential form now, again, this has a base of 10. You can't see it, but it's a given. And so my base is 10. My exponent is the 5. And my answer here is the A all over, it's an A, by the way, of 1.5. All right, uh, I'm just going to create a fraction equaling a fraction so I can cross multiply, which means our A value is equal to 10 or 1.5 times 10 to the power of five Yikes. which let me see here i'm gonna type that in and i get uh 150,000 micrometers which is a little symbol like that micrometers which if you wanted to convert them to meters, uh, you would divide by, what is it now? I believe it's, oh, it's 100,000. Micrometers is 10 to the power of negative six. So if I divide by 10 to the power of six, which is 100,000 here, I believe it's 100,000. One, two, three, four, five, six. A million, maybe, no, it's by a million, sorry, folks. Micrometers, got to learn my prefixes here. So it's dividing by a million. You actually would, it's saying that our ground would be, but we're just trying to get in micrometers, would be 0 0.15 meters. Or again, 15 centimeters, however you want to look at it. Again, we just needed this 150,000 micrometers, which again is one millionth of a meter. All right, uh, let's see here. One more. Again, real question here. Uh, the loudness L of a sound in decibels, dBs, 
after a Canadian there, Alex named after a Canadian, the scale, uh, Alexander Graham Bell. Uh, can be calculated using the formula L is equal to 10 times the log uh, divided by big I over uh, divided by I naught, where I is the intensity of sound in watts per square meter, okay? And I O, I naught, is equal 10 to the power of negative 12. Determine the intensity of a jet uh, taking off if the sound level is 120 decibels. All right, so that 120 decibels is the loudness so that's our l value so l is whoops 120 decibels by the way the human ear can't hear much more than that otherwise you blow out your eardrums P pretty painful i've heard all right now our i not here value it's just a standard unit or standard value is 10 to the power of negative 12. All right, so I'm going to substitute that information into our formula. And what we're looking for here is I, the intensity of this sound. All right, so I'm going to substitute in. So L again is our L value. So it's 120, which is equal to 10 times the log of i over i naught which is 10 to the power of negative 12. and there's a line there there we go all right so uh again i do not yet have a just a log equaling a number i will shortly once i divide by 10 on both sides All right, so those tens divide each other out. And of course, 120 divided by 10 is just going to be 12, which is equal to log, uh, again, times i over 10 to the power of negative 12. And this, again, is a situation where I do not have a log equaling a log, so I just can't delog. Uh, so I'm going to have to switch this into exponential form. All right. So again, my base, which you can't see, is 10. All right. There's my exponent, which is 12. And my answer here is I divided by 10 to the power of negative 12. And, uh, well, I want to simplify this equation for I, and so I am going to create a fraction equaling a fraction. And so uh, 1 times I is just I. Then I have 10 to the power of 12 times 10 to the power of negative 12. And, well... Power times the powers is grade 10 math and grade 9. You keep the base the same, add your exponents. And so, well, 10 to the power of 0 is just 1. And so, therefore, the intensity of this sound is equal to just 1. And the units here were uh, watts per meter squared. And in terms of the decibel scale, which I teach in physics, for those of you who are going to join me for that, in Quadmaster 4, that's how much watts is power. You'll see that on your appliances. And the decibel scale is based on how much power the sound has per square meter, how much impact. And again, that's why if your decibel sound that you're listening to is roughly 140, we'll do it. Uh, that will, how much, too much power to your ear per square Per square meter and it will blow your eardrum out which again i heard is a whoosh sound by it's followed by a tremendous amount of pain and uh, your hearing is never right after that they